Hello, and welcome to today's session of the 2021 AWS Global Public Sector Partner Awards. I'm your host, Natalie Ehrlich, and today we'll highlight the best cybersecurity solution. I'm very pleased to welcome our next guests. They are Tina Thorstensen, Executive Public Sector Strategist at CrowdStrike, and Jennifer Dvorak, Information Security Architect for the State of Arizona. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Well, you know, obviously a really wild year with COVID and, and it certainly pushed a lot of boundaries. Cybersecurity resiliency, also a hot topic as ransomware really spiked up. How have you addressed this concern um, and really accelerated this push uh, with COVID-19 in the backdrop? Uh, I'd love it if either one of you would just like to jump in here. Well, CrowdStrike was one of our initiatives for uh, 2020, and it was significantly increased, uh, the accelerated due to COVID. So we had to roll out in a matter of weeks when we uh, had a matter of months previously, and it really provided us the visibility that we needed for folks taking their computers home. We had no way of um, triaging any of our incidents when the computers were at home. So rolling out CrowdStrike uh, as quickly as possible. It gave us remote access, it gave us visibility, and that was uh, huge for our organization. Tina, if and, you could weigh in on this as well, that would be terrific. Sure, absolutely. You know, and uh, you know, Jen with the state of Arizona is, is uh, one of our uh, premier customers, but uh, across the board with the 2021 Global Threat Report that we issue each year, what we saw there is a fourfold increase in the number of intrusions. So to your point about the threat activity, and it's not getting better. So, so uh, what CrowdStrike is on a mission to do is stop breaches and uh, protect our organizations um, against these bad actors so that, they're, that we minimize disruptions. It's, it's really been tremendous to see, and you know, we build a ecosystem from a, a platform approach that started with visibility on the endpoint that Jen was uh, just alluding to. And Jennifer, I'd love to get your insight how the public sector and the private sector can work better in tandem with each other in order to protect uh, customers and also communities against um, ransomware attacks and uh, other kind of cybersecurity threats that we've seen coming from Russia, for instance. Certainly, so our state CISO, Tim Romer, he has definitely encouraged us to make partners with our uh, private sector vendors. So that's one of his strategic initiatives. And we really want partners in the, in the private sector. We want folks that are going to come alongside us and help us with our security goals. And CrowdStrike has been one of those vendors. Um, we don't wanna just spend money and then the vendor run away. We want somebody that's going to be with us every step of the way. Um, we've had some incidents this past year and CrowdStrike was the, the first team to alert us uh, because it was a different agency or a different part of our organization that we don't typically work with a lot. Um, and that was really helpful because we were able to act quickly um, and address the issues that arose. Um, so just having somebody that's looking out for your best interests and, um, and, and being a true partner is what we're really looking for. And that's the only way that we can circumvent these ransomware attacks. And Tina, I'd love it if you'd weigh in as well. How do you see your role um, in, in this uh, effort to protect the public evolving now in 2021? So I, I love that question. And uh, especially with the, the role, my role, brand new uh, in COVID, interestingly enough, to, to create this bi-directional executive alignment with our customers and our internal teams. And you know, overall at CrowdStrike, our, our goal, as I said, is to stop breaches. And it's really to bring, um, to minimize the frustration that comes sometimes with, uh, with rolling out security tools. I've been at this a long time and, and uh, you know, tools like CrowdStrike are really game changers for, um, for security teams that are really about protecting organizations. And essentially what we do is uh, you know, we brought a, a single platform where when it when the when our software is deployed to uh, an organization across their laptops, desktops, server, and cloud infrastructure, um, we we were born in the cloud. 
um, kind of before it was cool. <laughs> and uh, and now we serve more than 11,000 customers and that threat activity goes to a single AWS um, instance where we, where we look across all of the threat activity. And then when we see um, activity in, in one area, we can protect all of our customers. That's, that's the power of, of the cloud. Terrific. And I'd love uh, Jennifer's insights here too. What steps are you taking now to keep uh, the public uh, protected and the state cyber ready? And I like Tina's point about being uh, born in the cloud. So state of Arizona is a cloud first state. Uh, we are also looking for solutions in the cloud. And I think by leveraging cloud solutions, we're able to be more nimble. We're able to um, pivot our approach to security and uh, address anything that comes up more quickly. So being cloud first, even though it's it wasn't embraced uh, initially, I think that it's something that we've been driving towards and looking for more partners that um, support that cloud first initiative that we have. And Tina, what's top of mind? What are some of the key initiatives that your team uh, and teams are going to be focused on in the years ahead? What's the next phase for cybersecurity? Great question. And uh, we've talked a, uh, quite a bit about the endpoint, but uh, where we're headed and really where we've invested heavily the, the last couple of years and will continue moving forward is now that we have, we've uh, brought this game-changing visibility to uh, security teams uh, on, on the endpoint of, of uh, each, each one of the systems in their environment, we're, we've expanded the, the platform to now include cloud services, like I mentioned, now, now include uh, indicators of misconfigurations, which are you know, so detrimental uh, to teams it, working in a hybrid cloud environment. And then we've also moved in the, into the identity protection space. And, and essentially what we're doing there is the same thing we've been doing to protect workloads coming from desktops and laptops across the country and around the world and moved to a model where we're also in a zero trust principles way looking for threat activity coming in through um, through identities, through people logging into these systems and doing the same real-time continuous monitoring and taking proactive action uh, to protect organizations where we see malicious activity. Terrific, well, you know, in light of COVID-19, we saw a big spike in ransomware and I'd love to hear uh, specifically from uh, Tina, why do we need trusted partners rather than software vendors in this fight? You know, it's so important to get out in front of all of the adversaries. And most recently we, we've seen huge growth in the e-crime actors that are taking advantage of the tools that are unfortunately, you know, in the in the market today, sometimes, sometimes even free that allow them um, to hold organizations hostage. And the reason it's so important to partner with organizations and companies like CrowdStrike is that we've been thinking ahead and we aren't we aren't designed in a way to stop an individual a breach or adversary attack from, from occurring, but we've been watching how their adversary works. And, and now uh, we can see their activity very early on before they have a chance to gain a foothold in um, an organization's server or laptop um, or even a phone or tablet. And, uh, and really, what we're doing is we're providing protection so that it doesn't even need to move to an analyst to do further review. We just stop it right at the right at the gate before it causes harm. And the reason that this is so important probably is obvious, but uh, but we're about making sure that uh, that organizations like the state of Arizona can continue on their business and and uh, without these kinds of disruptions. So we haven't designed um, against one particular adversary, but we've really designed an approach that works across them all because we've we've uh, been watching so closely how they move through environments for years. And we use the power of artificial intelligence delivered from the cloud to uh, protect against all things, including ransomware. Right, uh, it's really uh, an evolving process. You constantly have to be vigilant uh, for the next threat. Now, I'd love to hear, you know, how you see things change with your tech partners and providers at the moment. 
So uh, from a CrowdStrike perspective, you know, we, uh, we aim to be absolutely the best in class for the products and services that we provide, whether that's uh, you know, products that you can purchase like our endpoint solutions, or whether that's services like our 24 seven threat hunting teams or uh, Falcon complete teams that basically serve as an, as an extension of an organization's team. But it's, it's absolutely critical that we, um, that we move this, uh, this direction and not try to be the best at everything and instead partner. Um, so we have extensive partnerships with Zscaler and Proofpoint and so many others. Uh, Okta, I mean, the list goes on and on and on with, uh, with now hundreds. And we also have a CrowdStrike store. So once you're a customer, we've uh, you know, reduced the friction to taking on and trying out new modules, either from us or new um, options that maybe you haven't considered before from our trusted partners. Uh, much like the AWS Marketplace, we've got the CrowdStrike store. And it's a growing set of partnerships where we build those integrations. So, you know, my, my prior life, I was the CISO for Arizona State University most recently. And um, we spent an awful lot of time integrating these solutions. And at CrowdStrike, we're about building those integrations so that the, the teams within the organizations uh, can get on to doing innovative things within their space rather than having uh, to spend all their time tying these technologies together. Yeah, now shifting to Jennifer, late last year, we learned that suspected Russian hackers broke into US government agencies, including a county in Arizona. So what measures has the state of Arizona put in place now to ensure that something like that won't happen again, or that at least the state is, you know, very vigilant and ready to protect uh, citizens and the government against these threats? Well, definitely partnering with um, products like, or vendors like, uh, CrowdStrike, that's what we, uh, we're looking to extend those partnerships. And not only that, um, we're developing our information sharing program across state, local, and uh, territorial governments. So we're looking to partner with the cities, the counties. Um, cybersecurity is a team sport. Cybersecurity um, is, you know, it, it takes everyone. It takes the, the whole state working together. And that's one of the things that we've been trying to build. So um, working in conjunction with the State Fusion Center, the Arizona Counterterrorism Information Center, we've been working to do more um, indicators of compromise sharing, uh, any intelligence that we've been gathering from these uh, counties that maybe did have an incident or a breach. We want to make sure that the information is disseminated to everyone so that we can be stronger and protect against it. Um, additionally, we, we're always looking for um, grants that we can extend um, so that we're able to extend our, um, our products that we use to some of the smaller cities and towns and counties so that they can leverage some of the same technologies like CrowdStrike in their environments. Um, at a fraction of the cost or paid for by a grant. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Well, Tina, how does your experience as a CrowdStrike customer now come into play uh, in your current role? Well, how's it come into play? Well, I, I think that um, um, it makes it really easy for me to be a, a liaison internally and uh, you know, help internal teams understand what it's like to to sit as a as a CISO or as a CIO or deputy CIO and to understand the kinds of challenges that um, that these teams are these leaders of these teams are facing as they're moving forward with their innovation agenda while making sure to uh, to make sure that they're gaining those operational efficiencies that are that are so important today and wowing their customers all the while right so so I think really what I bring to it is uh, that level of experience um, to to make sure that um, the voices of our customers are heard um, internally and um, and that we continue to build products and services that make sense for uh, for the needs of our customers additional capabilities like you know we just released Falcon X recon is it is an example of uh, one of our newer capabilities where we're basically looking at you know deep and dark web activity and bringing that together in the single, platform single event console that we've leveraged for years now and uh, in highlighting that activity many in many cases pre uh, pre breach so before you'd ever see it um, hit your 
uh, in an organization's operational environment, uh, we we would uh, detect it uh, through through that service. So so I think it's it's those all those things um, combined. Terrific. Well, you know, CrowdStrike won a number of key accolades this year, and I was curious, Tina, what you attribute to this huge success. Well, you know, I, I have to tell you that, um, you know, I've been in the security space for far too long. And what, what I what I can say is that until CrowdStrike came along, there wasn't a solution, a security solution that we could get software running on an endpoint that wasn't just frustrating <laughs> across the board. Um, there were conflicts with other, other software running um, or the software would work great for for one uh, platform, but it wouldn't work for the other. So we really have this, this, uh, this new approach. And I think that that's what's made us, in fact, I'm sure it's, it's uh, certainly what made me a, a wildly happy customer is that, uh, you know, that staff, faculty, employees, um, if we hadn't told them the software was being rolled out, they wouldn't have even noticed. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't impact the, the machines and it's really, really provided um, this amazing experience. And, you know, bringing all that with the 150 different adversary groups that we track, and we we take that on for uh, for the customers, and just bring visibility for the immediate things they need to take action on. Um, I, I think those are all all the things that uh, got us to this point. And building out this uh, platform is going to be um, really amazing to see in in the years to come as we expand across um, other areas uh, within the security uh, space either developing our own or really driving uh, partnerships to make it easier for our customers. Yeah, terrific. Well, I pulled up this stat here for us to examine because I think it's really important for our viewers to understand just how important cybersecurity is and how it's going to, to be even more important um, for customers and uh, you know the private uh, citizens and public citizens. Uh, according to cybersecurity ventures, cybercrime costs will grow by 15% per year, reaching 10.5 trillion by 2025. That's just in about four years. And not only that, cybercrime will become the third largest economy in the world after the United States and China. So, I mean, it's really terrific that you're stepping up. Um, you know, just if you could both, uh, perhaps Jennifer can go first and then Tina, you know, what are the key lessons that you have for, you know, even the federal government to take a more proactive stance against these threats? Well, I think it's clear that this is a very lucrative venture, business venture. It's treated like a business venture by these uh, criminal actors and they have a formula and it works. So I don't see that it's going to be changing anytime soon. So, um, and, it, and it's also not something that is highly sophisticated, highly technical. It's very easy. It's it's very much um, phishing. You know, users clicking on emails and vulnerabilities in environments. It's it's really uh, a very uh, easy formula that they continue to repeat. So, um, I think until uh, the federal government has more ways to recoup some of these ransomware payments or we're able to, um, to stop some of these ransomware as a service uh, products from being used, uh, I think it's gonna continue. So um, we're defenders, so we need to make sure that we're ready for anything that, that comes and, and using um, products that keep us safe is really the best way and training our users. Terrific, and Tina? Thank you. So. We are so passionate about making sure that our customers can sleep better at night. Um, it, when it comes down to tips, it really comes back to the basics in many regards, uh, but the basics are sometimes really hard to do. So they sound simple, but they aren't so easy to do. And it's basics like making sure your systems are patched. Um, every organization has just a growing number of devices and pieces of software and, and uh, infrastructure and all of those things uh, need, need to be patched nearly immediately to stay out in front of today's adversaries. And Jen's right, some are sophisticated, some are not. Uh, but um, the reality is if we leave those windows open, um, we, we will have adversaries oh, you know, walk into our house, if, if you will. So the basics like that, um, also making sure that you have great backups, right? So if uh, you do run into an instance 
of uh, ransomware where your systems are locked that, that you have the ability to recover quickly. Being proactive and making sure that you have the partnership arrangement ahead of time is a third really important a thing, thing to do. Many, many um, organizations now have IR retainers, that the incident response retainers that you can use proactively um, in, in years where um, you don't find yourself on your heels in a reactive situation, but then it's there when you need it. Um, sometimes um, it's, it's hard to find great services when there are the flood of ransomware attacks like we've uh, seen in, in recent months. And then and la lastly, and I should have started with this because it's the most important part, train your people. It's so important to make sure that security is just a culture, uh, a part of the culture, just like you know, you lock your car and you lock your house, uh, making sure that you're thinking about um, uh, those things that will help keep you safe and your organization safe. Really excellent points. Thank you both so much for your insights. That was Tina Thorstensen, Executive Public Sector Strategist at CrowdStrike, as well as Jennifer Dvorak, Information Security Architect for the State of uh, Arizona. Again, really appreciate your insights. This was a fantastic conversation with you. And that's all for the 2021 AWS uh, Global Public Sector Partner Awards or this session of that. I'm your host, Natalie Ehrlich, and see you very soon.